In a case of mistaken identity, best friends Max Dixon and Mason Wrist were hunted down and killed by a machete gang when they were en route to order pizza. Max, 16, and Mason, 15, had grown up together and had developed a strong friendship from a young age. They spent their time talking and playing PlayStation games while attending the same nursery, junior, and secondary schools. The teenagers' desire to spend time together was evident on January 27th. At 11.13 p.m., CCTV captures Max phoning Mason's home on Ilminster Avenue in Knoll, Bristol, and the two of them strolling down the street to get a pizza. Mason's mother, Nikki Knight, was having a rare night out with friends, while Max's mother, Leanne Eklund, was getting ready for bed. They were not aware that their boys were getting together and going out to eat, even though they knew they were close. However, shortly after they left, the young boys were mistakenly identified as the perpetrators of an attack on a house that had occurred an hour earlier, and they were chased and brutally attacked with knives just yards from Mason's front door. Today, their devastated families honored the innocent couple who wouldn't hurt a fly and celebrated the attacker's acquittal. Today, three youths, ages 15, 16, and 17, who cannot be identified for legal reasons, Anthony Snook, 45, and Riley Tolliver, 18, were found guilty of Max and Mason's murders. While the killers fled in their car and burned their clothes to hide their traces, Max and Mason perished in the hospital after suffering unsurvivable stab wounds. Max's mother, Leanne Eklund, stated that Mason and her son had been friends since elementary school. She remarked, The past six weeks have been emotionally taxing. The reality that two families return home without their boys is unaffected by today's outcome. Hopefully, we can start to come to terms with that and remember them both, as well as the fond memories that both families have of Max and Mason. I must express my gratitude to all those who have contributed to our case. I greatly admire the effort, commitment, and support you provide for our family. I can't put into words how grateful I am to everyone. They have my eternal gratitude. We have justice for our boys. But I wish we didn't have to be here today. Our family is like a jigsaw puzzle and, with the loss of Mason, it is like a part of our jigsaw is gone forever and will never be complete, Mason's family said in a statement issued following the verdicts. Mason would never harm a fly and was a calm boy. He was simply so sweet and naive. We cannot express our feelings in words. The entire process has been extremely difficult, and it is terrible to consider Mason's final moments after hearing what we have heard and what happened to him. Timeline How an attack on a home led to murders Mason Rist, 15, and Max Dixon, 16 were attacked and killed in Bristol's Knoll West neighborhood on the evening of January 27, 2024. This is the attack's timeline. January 27, 2024. Saturday, 10.07 p.m. A woman is hurt when three males brandishing machetes hurl bricks at the windows of a Hartcliffe home. CCTV footage shows the attack. 10.48 p.m. In Snook's Audi Q2, 45-year-old Anthony Snook and a 16-year-old make their way back to Hartcliffe from Swindon. They had purchased a cell phone. At 10.57 p.m., Snook, the 16-year-old, and a 17-year-old drive out of the Hartcliffe residence. Riley Tolliver, 18, and a 15-year-old are picked up from a nearby street. Tolliver is carrying a baseball bat, while the other three are brandishing machetes. They go to the Knoll West District, which is their competitor. The Audi pulls into Ilminster Avenue in Knoll West at 11.13 p.m. Max makes a call to his pal Mason's house on Ilminster Avenue at 11.13 p.m. Almost instantly, they depart from the property. In a matter of seconds, the Audi passes the friends, turns around, and returns to them. At 11.14 p.m., the Audi comes to a stop, and the four armed teens exit the vehicle and begin pursuing Max and Mason. The two lads are attacked for a mere 33 seconds. After that, the vehicle departs the scene. Tolliver and the 15-year-old are dumped off. 11.21 p.m. Snook returns to the Hartcliffe property with the 16 and 17-year-olds. In a matter of minutes, clothes are being burned in the backyard. Snook returns to his residence on Dowling Road at 11.29 p.m. Sunday, January 28th. Mason gets to Bristol Children's Hospital at 0.12 a.m. Snook is taken into custody at his residence around 0.15 a.m. 
Max gets to Southmead Hospital at 0.33 a.m. Mason is pronounced dead at 0.49 a.m. Max is pronounced dead at 1.02 a.m. At 1.08 a.m., the 16 and 17-year-olds take a taxi to a block of apartments. Fifteen minutes later, they show up. The 16-year-old leaves the apartment at 5.07 a.m. 5.22 a.m., the 16-year-old comes back with beverages and takeout from McDonald's. We now have to live the rest of our lives without the missing piece of our puzzle because these dangerous people took away our son, brother, nephew, uncle, and granddaughter. We wish to express our sincere gratitude to everyone who put in so much effort on this matter. We are grateful to the investigation team for their dedication and hard work. Although working long hours and under pressure wasn't easy, it was thanks to you that we were able to achieve this outcome. Without having the best family liaison officers assigned to us, the family would not have been able to go through this terrible period. Throughout this terrible process, they have gone above and beyond to make sure we are always informed, led, and supported. While the family of the victims sobbed in the public gallery as the guilty verdicts were handed down, the defendants sat apathetically and looked straight ahead. Others pounded the air and cheered. In a case of mistaken identity, Max and Mason were hunted down and fatally killed shortly after leaving the Ilminster Avenue residence. The jury was shown CCTV footage showing a group of five males exiting a car brandishing machetes and attacking the escaping youngsters in a frantic 33-second onslaught. Tolliver is seen requesting permission to puff on his blue res cherry vape before being carried away in video of police arresting him at home. Can I try my puff before I go though? Tolliver asks. It's a puff. Can't I? The only thing is the blue res cherry. Nicotine. Officers decline, citing the possibility of cannabis in it, which could affect your ability to be interviewed, and they want to avoid causing issues. Tolliver can also be heard requesting that authorities remove his handcuffs and allow him to stand up. At another time, he authorizes the cops to explain his arrest to his grandma. At 10.07 p.m. that night, the two lads were mistakenly accused of throwing bricks at a house in the rival Hartcliffe suburb. After about half an hour, Snook and two of the boys left the property, picked up the other two on a nearby street, and then drove to Knoll West. The jury was informed that the Audi Q2 had been driven around Knoll West for a minimum of 12 minutes before the assault. When Snook noticed Mason and Max in the street while driving down Ilminster Avenue, they mistakenly thought they had located the attackers. The prosecution's Ray Tully KC told the jury they were completely wrong about that. Max and Mason had no relation whatsoever to those events and had nothing to do with any previous incident. The three youths with machetes and Tolliver, who was carrying a baseball bat, leaped from the car and began chasing the two youngsters. Two individuals from the car are seen pursuing Max and Mason as they head to opposite sides of the street. While the 16 and 17 year old boys pursued Max, Tolliver and the 15-year-old guy attacked Mason. After assaulting Max, the 17-year-old teenager also hit Mason, who was hurt on the ground, on his way back to the Audi. Mason's neighbor's CCTV camera recorded the incident, which lasted only 33 seconds from the moment the car pulled up until the kids got back in and drove off. Both Mason and Max died in the hospital early on January 28th after suffering deadly stab wounds. Snook let the teenagers off in Knoll West after driving them away from the site. Items connected to the attack were disposed of, and a fire was started in a backyard. Six hours after the attack, the 16-year-old boy went to McDonald's for lunch and beverages. Snook said that following the assault on the Hartcliffe property, he believed he was transporting the teens to a safe house in his Audi Q2 handicap vehicle. Snook claimed that he thought they were outside the safe house when he was instructed to halt on Ilminster Avenue. The landscape gardener, who had a leg injury in a car accident, claimed he was staring in his rearview mirror when Max and Mason were attacked and was unaware that the boys were armed. I assumed they were fighting or something. I had no desire to get involved. It didn't seem like it was something that killed two people, he added. I simply believed that I had been drawn into something foolish involving Hartcliffe and Noel. I was unaware that anyone had suffered severe injuries. During the trial, none of the four teens testified. However, the jury was informed that the 16-year-old had been secretly recorded while in detention stating, 
that he had to sort of join in after hearing Mason scream during the assault. In addition, he said that before leaving for Knoll West, he had put on loads more tracksuits and forgotten his phone. The adolescent's attorneys told the jury in their final arguments that there was no coordinated strategy to attack the two boys. The 16-year-old's attorney, Anna Vigas KC, implied that her client had no plans to murder Max or seriously hurt Mason. He gets left behind since he didn't act quickly. If there was a plan, he had no idea what it was, Mrs. Vigas stated. Not only did he have a bad heart, but he also had a bad intention. The 17-year-old's attorney, Christopher Quinlan KC, stated that his client had acknowledged Max's manslaughter but denied hurting Mason in any way. The CCTV evidence of Mason standing up after being hit by the 15-year-old was given to the jury. Prosecutors then claimed that the 17-year-old attacked Mason again. As the 17-year-old passed him, Mr. Quinlan offered another explanation to the jurors. He had managed to get to his feet, but because of the injury he sustained, he wasn't able to stand. When you separate Mason's actions from the 17-year-old, there is no proof that he actually stabbed him or made contact with him, we say. Riley Tolliver's attorney, Ignatius Hughes KC, stated that his client had not used a sword, machete, or zombie knife to hit Mason. A large zombie knife is a very different choice of weapon to go out with than a baseball bat, he stated. He had the chance to seriously hurt Mason, but he chose not to do so. He was not participating in the attack that killed Max because it occurred at the same time that he was killing Mason, according to Kate Brunner KC, who is representing the 15-year-old. He told you about the horrible thing he did. When he stabbed Mason, he was 14 years old, she continued. He claims to have done that, and by admitting guilt, he has been truthful with both you and this court. We would like to express our sincere gratitude to Detective Superintendent Gary Haskins and his entire team, Mason's uncle David Knight continued. They made a commitment to us at the outset to do all within their power, and they have. They possess them. No one should ever see any of that, and we would like to thank the jury for having to see what we have seen. We would like to express our gratitude to them for making the right choice. Detective Superintendent Gary Haskins, senior investigating officer at Avon and Somerset Police, stated following the verdicts that Max and Mason were killed in a case of mistaken identity while they went out for pizza. They are lovely boys, going about their lives in their own neighborhood when they were indiscriminately attacked by the people, he remarked. We do know that they went by Max as he was making his way to Mason's residence. Then Mason leaves his home and goes to meet Max. They believe that's them they will do as the car passes. They were searching Knoll for people. We know that before they found these two boys. They had driven around Knoll two and a half times. Bristol Crown Court will sentence Snook on November 19th. After pre-sentence reports are prepared, the other four offenders will be sentenced on December 16th. The jury was commended by trial judge Mrs. Justice May for their efforts during the previous five weeks. I think the most significant public service you are asked to perform is jury duty, she stated. As everyone knows, this has been one of those cases that can be especially taxing on a jury. The deaths of Max and Mason sent shockwaves through their community and the city of Bristol, said Vicki Cook, head crown prosecutor for CPS Southwest. To develop our case, the Crown Prosecution Service collaborated closely with our fellow members of the Serious Crime Investigation Team for Avon and Somerset. This was that Max and Mason's killings were the joint responsibility of all five accused. The evidence indicates that all five were working together and shared joint responsibility for this terrible crime, regardless of which individuals caused any of the fatal injuries. After arming themselves, the four young men set out to assault everybody they could find. When they discovered Max and Mason, they attacked together in a vicious manner, killing both boys. While the young individuals searched for targets to attack, Anthony Snook drove them around. He was aware of their heavy weaponry and desire for vengeance. He could have known exactly what they were going to do. Snook assisted the young people in fleeing the scene by acting as their getaway driver after waiting for them while they executed their cowardly attack. Carrying knives and other bladed weapons can only result in disaster, as today's judgments serve as a reminder. The families of Max and Mason have experienced an unfathomable loss, 
and our thoughts are with them.